right, folks, looking at the uh, five dollar martini we're about to have here. It's called Honeydew. It's got uh, coconut and pineapple in it. So, two magic words in my mind: coconut and pineapple. So, looks <laughs> green. I'm not sure why it's green, but I don't. I don't remember coconut being green or pineapple being green. But it's because hey, there there's absinthe in it. That's that could be what it is. <laughs> anyway, we're here uh, to do an interview with Sean McGurvey of the Greenback Cookies. He's here. You no, know, I'll be honest with you. I did ask for I, on Facebook. I said, "Defenders, this is your chance to get some love. Please show up." You guys didn't show up, so I have two hey. words for you. Yeah. And I can't say them publicly. <laughs> anyway, you guys have to show up to get interviewed. So don't blame me if you get love out of it because you guys don't show up here. Number one. Hey, but a Caps but fan. Sean, yeah, Cap fans here, so we'll give him some love. Right. Boogie's here to get some love as well too. Sean, how'd you hear about our league? You know, actually, I heard about it through uh, Meetup.com. Okay. So, and I, I did a search on on hockey. I've been out of uh, playing hockey for a while, and saw the DCHL show up, and you know, the rest is history. If I recall, you emailed me, and you showed up on the last day of the I season did. in the in the in the, in the spring in the in the spring season, right? Yes. Spring it, season. It was a pickup game, it, between, and you got uh, hurt that I game did. too. It was a pickup game that. between L2T and uh, and Scabs, and uh, you're filling in for somebody. I, yes. I filled in on L2T and. I think maybe I was, what, like two shifts in, and the knee buckled, and I'm like, ah, oh, you know, and they like carried me off, and, and I remember, uh, I think it was Kirill asked, you know, hey, you going to be able to go back out? And I lifted up my, my pant leg, and my knee was all swollen up, and then he's like, nah, never mind, you know, or maybe I think he said, maybe in the third period, you know, I think is what he said. Typical hockey player, right? Exactly. Walk it off, you're fine. Now, now what happened? Did, did you have a, a torn leg, or did you, a strain ligament? What happened there? Uh, Give me some know, medical uh, opinion. You know, or uh, a synopsis of what happened. Yeah, before. so, you know, I thought for sure I torn the ACL. I actually uh, had ACL reconstruction on my right knee, huh? so uh, that was my worry. But, you know, I went to uh, the orthopedic, and they said there looked like there was no structural damage. I probably just have some soft tissue damage in there, and that's why I was swelling up. So they said basically I was the uh, orthopedic equivalent of rub some dirt in it, you'll be fine. So <laughs> I had to go to PT for a while and uh, ended up uh, last season I, I stayed with the team. And but yeah, you uh, didn't, you didn't, unfortunately, you didn't, you didn't play a game. You missed the entire right. season. Exactly. Missed the, the entire, missed the entire fall season in this yeah. case. Yeah. Uh, but um, you were, you, you, I think you played the first game of the season. Is that right? Just briefly? This season, yeah. You that's did, right. Okay. Yep. And how, how did that go? I mean, are you, are you back 100%? Are you not 100%, yes. but are you back playing now? I mean, I am, is it getting better yeah. now? Okay. Yeah, and actually, Jason and I were talking about this over email earlier. I'm going to I'm gonna play in uh, the upcoming game. Um, I stayed out of the last game partly because I was worried about the knee not being quite 100%. And we had so many people on That's the roster true. for the game. There was no need to push myself to be out there. Um, the first game went pretty well. I stayed out for a couple shifts. Um, but between us having a little bit of line confusion and also me just being a little bit worried, honestly, about the knee, I pulled myself out of the game after the first couple shifts and just stuck to bench coaching. Um, I will say it was funny at one point. Sometime in the second shift, I was uh, I was running after a puck in the, uh, in the offensive zone as I was starting to back check back. I, I didn't even realize I was doing it, but I must have been limping a little bit as I was running because all of a sudden I heard Bill Hoffman screaming from the uh, from the bench, Sean, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And then I realized, oh, maybe I'm not fine. Maybe I should sit this one out. So uh, so we'll see how it goes from here. I think it'll be good. Now, a, a great point by Sean here. Sean actually is the captain of, uh, of the Big Mac Bookies, a role he actually embraced and did a great job of last season while uh, Jason, the captain, was playing in Nets uh, in the games for the uh, GBB last season. Sean was coaching, cheering them on, doing lines, doing all the admin work. Great, great patch for a new person who hasn't played, who basically played less than one game with the league, uh, helping the new the new, uh, the new expansion team at that time. You guys are expansion team last yeah. season. Uh, gel together as well, too. So uh, your thoughts on the team and what you saw from day one and to where you are now? Oh my gosh, it's like night and day. Uh, you know, even, even last season, I mean, I mean, the, the team that that started the season was so different from the team that ended. Uh, I think the level of play increased a lot. I think, you know, I think the team really did start to gel by the end. A lot of good chemistry. Um, you know, I, I think it's impressive. I mean, uh, you know, we have some things we have to work on, obviously. Um, you know, our, our, our defense, you know, needs some work. And by that, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying anything about our defensemen. It's just, you know, it takes team time. Defense, yeah, it takes you know, time. As defense team, is more than you know, more than just, just individual players. Absolutely. It's communication and synchronization between offensive players, absolutely. between goalies and defensive yeah. players. Communication, back checking. It's, it's a combination. 
sorts of things. Defense is a team concept. You're right. Absolutely. You're right about that. Um, great job. I mean, great job with the team. And the team looks good as well, too. And the uh, expansion team, the second season, ranked as high as number two at one point in the power rankings. Uh, so a lot of high hopes for you this season yeah. uh, coming off as well, too. Now, personally, on your personal side, you play maybe one or two games at most with our league out there. So you really have a chance to you know, figure out where you belong. Seeing how this league functions and, and how players play, are you a forward? Are you a scorer? Are you a grinder? Are you a two? Are you a defender? Are you what? What? Where do you play? Where do you see yourself well, playing it when you're back healthy, 100%? So you know, I'm used to playing left wing. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm. A, so I'll say I'm, I'm more of a defensive-minded left wing. I, I like to. Uh, I like. To and you wear a cap shirt? <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't get this. Well, you know, it is a Carlson jersey. Oh, okay. So, okay. You know, so we'll just, we'll slap you know, by you. Defensive. Because uh, defense and know. caps have no caution whatsoever. <laughs> no, None whatsoever. No, no. Well, go ahead. I'm sorry. But, no, but, uh, you know, I, I I like to play more of the role of uh, trying to set up scoring plays or back-checking quickly, trying to disrupt uh, other players' stick handling, back in war zone, that kind of thing. Um, so that's more of the role I see myself as. Okay. Uh, and that's one of the areas I'm trying to work on, you know, I've worked on throughout the season in my rehabs, trying to improve my speed, trying to, you know, get back on track with that. Uh, so that's kind of where I see myself, I think. One question for I'll at hand over Jason to ask him a couple questions about too. What the boogies have to do? Give me three keys the boogies have to basically adhere to or have to really win those battles. Three keys, you may, in, in your opinion, for you guys to compete the DCHL Cup wreck. Well, you know, I think the biggest thing that comes to mind for me is uh, is playing better defense as a team. You know, so you know, we talked about how you have to have this team dynamic. You have to have the communication on the on the floor. Uh, you know, there were a number of games where we allowed uh, the team's de the other team's defense to pinch up into our blue line or pink line and just take shots at will from the point. And you know, we can't allow that kind of thing to happen. Our wingers need to cover the point better. We need to you know cut off those passes there. Um, I think we need to cut down on quality scoring chances in general. You know, we've allowed uh, you know in addition to the you know firing on us from the point. I think we've allowed allowed a lot of shots even in the slot. You know, and I think we have to clear the middle out. We need to push their offense to the boards and let the defense you know handle it from there. Um, and then I think the third thing, which kind of relates to all those things, is just better communication in general. You know, uh, you know we've had a situation a couple times where. You know, because of a little bit of chaos on our defensive play, uh, Mike Medina, for example, one of our new defensive players, outstanding defenseman, very good. Um, but there were times when he just didn't have anybody to pass to. And so when he get the puck, he would take it up himself and do the breakout himself out of our zone. Well, we have to communicate better as a team and know, you know what? Now that we are, we're down a defenseman behind us, we need to come over and come that Rotate back up, exactly. And, right. Rotate Hockey 101. Up. Rotate exactly. back as well, too. You know, and you make, make a big point, big point here because in this league, the rink we play is pretty big. It's right. almost NHL size. So yeah. you cannot take the, the rushes work here and there if you're a really speed guy. But more often than not, it's a passing. you got to pass the ball. Absolutely. Move your legs and pass the ball. Uh, so you know, I think it's going to be a key factor to get the outlet pass going uh, as well. Now, we talked about Batman and Robin in the Pro Division. We have our own version of Batman and Robin <laughs> in yeah. Andrew Kramer and Daniel Ruber yes. as well, too. That's, yeah. He's your Robin uh, to uh, Andrew Kramer's Batman. Yeah. How good is Daniel Ruber, in your opinion? Oh, Daniel is outstanding. He's a, you know, he's... And the thing is, too, is Daniel is not just a good player on the ice. He's also a great player off the ice. And what I mean by that is, you know, he's always sending emails to Jason and myself about different strategy or line combinations that I think might work better. And and, uh, and I think it's extremely helpful. I mean, we, we try to encourage all the players on our team to, to really give us a lot of feedback. You know, don't be afraid to speak up, even during the game. You know, if you think, you know what, you guys are full of crap. I don't know why we're playing this sort of system. You know, why don't we do this? We're getting hammered. Tell us. Go ahead and tell us. You know, if we need to make an adjustment, we'll do it. And, and Daniel's not afraid to, you know, to speak up and make those adjustments. But, you know, he's a great uh, scorer in his own right. You know, I think we, I think he might get overshadowed a little bit by by all the attention that we put on Andrew. But yeah. Daniel's an excellent player. Yes, uh, I was just going to say, it's not Batman and Robin. It's, it's Batman and Batman. It really <laughs> okay, is. Yeah, yeah. Andrew really gets is. a lot of the credit, and, and rightfully 
probably so, but, but Daniel is a scorer. I love the call. Just uh, he will, the low you injury by Daniel, he will make you pay. <laughs> there you well, go. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew and Daniel, the combination is very potent. And Daniel, as Jason said, he will make you pay. If, if you leave him with the puck and you don't cover him, you know, he will he will put it away. But I think, you know, I think Daniel is also a very good passer. He's very good. He's an assist machine, you know. So is Seth, honestly. So is Mara. Um, and I think they, they put other players in good position, you know, and, and that's really, I mean, yeah, Andrew scores a lot of unassisted goals as well, but he also gets a lot of, you know, assists that come his way that set him up in a good position, so good point. Uh, you really can't, I, I, I wouldn't call them Batman and Robin either, <laughs> would, you know, Batman and Batman or Superman and Batman or whatever you want to say, but. Now, Jason, any questions for you for your captain here? Yeah, uh, you, you, you mentioned how it had been, uh, when you've gotten into this league, it had been a while since you played hockey. What's your previous hockey? Experience. Took my question, Jason. There you yeah. go. Good question. So, good that was my question, question too. Good question. So, um, so I went to uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Uh, hockey, so, hockey, hockey, uh, Megaton. Yes, right? our RPI is a big, uh, yeah. big hockey uh, school there. Actually, Adam Oates, you know, uh, did he really went to? Yep, he uh, graduated. I guess the year before me. Wow. And, uh, and look, look, look how low he's he's sunk now to be the captain of the coach. <laughs> when you go from a high to a low, you know what I mean? Hey, that's hey, how life uh, works. Hey, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, folks, by the way, for the second week in a row that, that, that he's been t filming this, he's wearing a Caps hat. So take he everything is. he uh -huh. says with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. I might say I almost had a heart attack when I saw Suds in the Caps hat, but... Uh, don't, you know. Yeah, like I said earlier, okay. don't get excited. It's just something I picked up out of the closet, okay? <laughs> yeah, basically what it is out there. Uh, but anyway, uh, you, you, your point about Adam Oates yeah. playing for your, for your college, right? Yeah, exactly. he played uh, on the varsity squad. Uh, Joe Juno also uh, Wow, so you, you, have a, you have a pretty good uh, uh, yeah. cap alumni going through uh, through, your, through your college oh, apparently. absolutely yeah and, and honestly, so what would wrong for you <laughs> well you know it was either the nhl or life of engineering and i figured you know, engineer, what's huh? the fame and fortune of the nhl <laughs> uh, i'd rather grind it out in an engineering job in a cubicle that would work wife well, and kids so, right you know, exactly yeah. you know what, yeah, what, uh, the family life is more happen, important yeah. so. exactly and you know what there's always dchl for you so you know not a bad trade-off wife and kids hey. dchl to nhl absolutely i'll take any ada of the week if i were you out there um, so good. That's your hockey. Did you ever play ice hockey well, before? Ice hockey before at all? Or? So, and I, I'm sorry, I should clarify, you okay. know, when I was RPI, I did not play for the varsity team or anything like that. Uh, okay. It was uh, intramural ice hockey and intramural floor hockey. So okay. That was my experience. They I, have that at, at that at Believe schools? it or not. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, I played on my fraternity's uh, hockey team for both of those. Um, and actually, uh, I mentioned I had a, a right ACL injury. It was in a uh, ice hockey game at RPI that I, I tore that ACL, so, ah. um, so that was, uh, you know, that was an interesting experience. Uh, I remember at the time when I when I got hit, uh, everybody was rushing towards where I was, and the ref was screaming, you know, it was an accident, no fighting, no fighting, because it looked like, you know, somebody was going to get pounded on, but, uh, you know, it, it happens, uh, you know, and, and after that, I kind of played a little bit of pickup hockey here and there, here and there, just trying to get back into it, but, yeah, the last really serious hockey I did was uh, was college with RPI. So. Wow, that's awesome. Good story between Adam Oates, Joe, and Gino as well. Two tight as well, too. Uh, quick last question for you. Everybody likes a league for their own personal reasons. What do you like best about DCHL personally yourself? You know, actually, what I like most about it is the uh, are the people in it. You know, a lot of really great people in it. Uh, a lot of good character, uh, great personality. I apologize for Sean Jason sticking me. I really apologize for that. Time for you, so. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to stick you on, there's on there's this team. There's exceptions to every Yeah, yeah exactly. There's always yeah. exceptions out there, so right. you got stuck with Jason in this game. Uh, so. that, that captain of the Greenback Warriors is a real dick, isn't he? <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, no, he's great. He's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, anyway, uh, but no, you know, and actually, funny story. So, uh, Early last season, uh, you know, I, I actually have two two boys, uh, eleven year old and an eight year old. Wow. Um, yep. And uh, and I and I bring them to the games every now and again. They go up up top of the uh, you know photo area or whatever uh, where the games filmed and, and cheer from there. But uh, but I remember after the, like I think it was maybe second or third game I brought them to and I asked them what they thought. And uh, my son Joe, he's eleven. He actually asked me when he got older, could he play in the DCHL? <laughs> You know, he said, 
said, can I play for your team, Dad, when I get older? Because he goes, the people, I, these are really cool. Those guys are really great. I think they're awesome. And he knows all the names of the players on the Greenback Boogie. That's awesome. That's great. He, you know, he That's knows great. their stats. He, he knows who they are. Uh, honestly, I think if we had Greenback Boogie trading cards and bobbleheads, <laughs> he would have a full collection, probably. Uh, you know? Spoiler alert. <laughs> It's in the words. Yeah, right. Oh, God, we got nothing's going on with the league. I don't need, I need any trading card. That's not going to be on the list now overall. Uh, but thank you for being here. Thanks for sharing your stories with you. Uh, good to see you back playing again. Hopefully uh, you're healthy here and, and can play long term. Help the movies to maybe uh, a top two, top four, maybe a run of the uh, DC checkup as well, too. So. Number one. All the way up. Good, yeah, number one, baby. Go. Good luck there as well, too. Thank you. We'll be back here momentarily with our PTI segment of our podcast here. I keep saying podcast. It's a weekly recap show. That's what it is. The weekly <laughs> recap show here on at Bar Louie's here. And uh, if you see over here, I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to do something that I shouldn't do here. There is a general manager and somebody else who's probably higher up in the, in the hierarchy. I can zoom in correctly and, and not lose focus. And I can't do it apparently very, very well. But he's there in the background. And he's going to work on getting us a deal here at Bar Louie's. Just spoke to him momentarily here. General manager James here at Bar Louie. And uh, his, his, uh, I forgot the gentleman's name next to him. I believe he also works for Bar Louis as well, too, in a higher capacity of corporate. So uh, hopefully a deal coming out here for DCHL players on the Sundays here at Bar Louis for being a value sponsor uh, of, of DCHL. Back momentarily here with our PTS segment here before we watch the Caps get slaughtered by the Penguins here at Bar Louis <laughs> on a Wednesday night here at the DCHL recap show. Back in two and two. Dun -dun 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 -dun. <laughs>